Welcome to part four of lecture four of bluff body aerodynamics. So for cars, the most useful way of thinking about the drag is breaking it down by components, the third of the three techniques that were introduced a little earlier. So here the components are going to be thinking about its form drag, induced drag, cooling air drag, roughness drag, and interference drag. We'll revisit these more in the next lecture in, in a couple of weeks in more detail. For now, let's think a little bit about form and induced drag. You can't really separate these from one another, to be honest. Um, they're basically the drag sources that come just from the shape of the vehicle itself. Um, because this inevitably leads to the generation of streamlines vortices, there's some induced drag that also occurs. Um, and that's related to lift generation as well. But again, it's very difficult to separate out these two things. So this considers sort of the basic vehicle shape. So we've got no wheels, no cooling airflow, nothing like door handles, um, you know, no side mirrors. Um, the underbody is sort of made to be smooth. The wheel houses are filled in. So basically this is kind of like a flying object near the ground. This is what we mean by the basic form. And this basic shape has a pretty low drag coefficient, it turns out. So here's some some shapes for reference. Um, so we've got sort of this ellipsoid, which has a CD 0.06. Um, kind of a 2D version of that ellipsoid is 0.14. This sort of car hatchback type shape is only a little worse at 0.17, and it's better than, than a sphere, for example. Um, and, and, and much better than sort of just a, a cylinder with a blunt trailing edge. Now, if we change the inclination of the body relative to the flow, this is going to alter both the lift and the drag. For a car, we can alter that inclination by the design of the suspension. We can make the front or rear of the car sit slightly higher than the other end. Um, so because we have the ability to do this, it makes sense to determine what orientation is going to minimize the drag. Um, just a bit of terminology here, that inclination relative to the road is what we'll call an angle of attack. So at a positive angle attack, the front end of the vehicle will be higher than the rear end. So for our kind of uh, basic form flying car shape, this min the minimum drag tends to occur at a negative lift. Um, we can see that here on this plot at sort of a negative lift coefficient of about point, negative 0.13, we get this, the minimum drag coefficient. And at a zero lift, we have sort of you know, drag coefficient that's somewhat higher. But realistic vehicle shapes with the wheels and everything added actually produce positive lift um, at the minimum drag condition. And this is not really ideal because it reduces the downforce on the wheels and reduces the handling capability of the car. Right, the wheels and the vortices associated with them account for this, this main difference. Um, and this is one of the reasons why we sometimes need to, to put features on vehicles to try to add downforce even though uh, it comes at the expense of additional drag.